Thanks. Um, first of all, I'm absolutely delighted to be speaking here today. It's wonderful to see so many enthusiastic divers and uh, to have such a warm reception. I'm going to talk a bit about the campaign that we're working on at the moment, which is to do with marine protected areas. Um, for those that might not know, the Marine Conservation Society, Society is a UK-based charity, and we work to protect seas, shores, and wildlife primarily in the UK. We do a bit of work in the British Overseas Territories, but the majority of our work is based here to protect our seas here. I'm going to be talking about our Marine Protected Area campaign that we're sort of relaunching at the moment. I'm going to sort of talk a bit about how we've got to the point that we're at and hopefully what you can do to help us to further our aims. As you all know, UK seas are amazing. We've just been hearing some amazing stories of dives that have happened in the UK. Of course, not everyone knows that, and lots of people think that seas in the UK are dull, boring, uninhabited, cold, grey. So we have a really big challenge to try and convince a large proportion of society that there's something here that's worth protecting. And that's a lot of what we try and do, is to get the message out there that there is something here that needs to be uh, protected, needs to be conserved for future generations. We've got some absolutely amazing sites in the UK. So, for example, we have a marine conservation zone called Cromer Shoals, which is off the Norfolk coast. Um, it's actually 200 metres off the coast, so it's, it's really accessible. It's a chalk reef, which is possibly the longest chalk reef of its kind in the world, but it's definitely the longest in Europe. Uh, it's home to thousands of different types of species, including some rare sponges, which were only discovered and were new to science in 2011. There's another marine conservation zone that we want to see designated called Beachy Head East. It's near Brighton, and it's home to biogenic reefs, uh, amazing mussel beds, the cuckoo wrasse lives there, and also there is the short-snouted seahorse that lives literally just, just off the coast. As we heard in the previous presentation, you know, the UK is home to basking sharks, harbour porpoise, the occasional turtle swims through, there are dolphins. The, the, what we have uh, seas that are teeming with wildlife and really need to be protected. Very sadly, of course, UK seas have been exploited in many ways for decades. One of the biggest challenges that we face is trying to address issues of overfishing with really industrialised techniques. So that's the bottom trawling where fishermen um, with huge boats rake up the seabed and unfortunately just kill everything that's there whilst they're doing it. Dredging for aggregates is a really big problem in the UK as well. So that's when the sand is removed from the seabed and uh, used in industry, often turned into materials to make roads, for example. We all know the effects of climate change and the rising sea levels and how they're affecting us. We have problems with invasive species in the UK as a result of climate change. There's issues to do with ghost gear, um, which is lost and abandoned fishing gear that, that is uh, found in the seas and can entangle large marine mammals and also catch lots of fish accidentally. And something that we do a lot of with uh, the Marine Conservation Society is to try and promote issues to do with rubbish and pollution that end up in our seas as well. So one of the big things which I'm sure many of you know about is um, our Beach Clean program, where we record the different types of litter that are found on beaches. And one of the main things that we're finding as being a problem at the moment is wet wipes ending up on beaches, because a lot of wet wipes are labelled as flushable, but unfortunately, they're really not. They don't biodegrade in any way, and they just end up back on our shores. So there's lots that needs to be done to help protect our seas. Of course, we've been campaigning for some time, and in collaboration with yourselves. Um, in 2009, the Marine and Coastal Access Act was passed, which allowed for marine conservation zones to be designated. Um, for those that might not be aware, a marine conservation zone is, is um, almost like a, a national park in the sea. It's lines on a map that say, this is the area that we are going to protect. They're hugely important because once this area is designated, we can look and see how best to manage uh, the seabed that's in that site. So it could be that 
the most dangerous types of fishing, for example, are prevented. It could be that uh, we try and ensure that dredging doesn't happen there or that boats aren't moored there to disturb seagrass, for example. BSAC have been instrumental in helping campaign to get these uh, marine conservation zones. I know that lots of clubs were lobbying MPs and really helping to push forward this agenda um, at a national level to make sure that we got these areas designated. Initially, we were asking for 127 of these MCZs. Unfortunately, that still hasn't happened. We've had 50 that have been designated. And one of the reasons uh, for that is because these are relatively controversial sites in some respects, because lots of people have lots of interest in trying to uh, keep the sea as it is at the moment without necessarily putting in any type of protection. One of the great highlights of the previous campaign to try and get these areas designated was this march on Parliament, of which BSAC uh, took part alongside Sea Life Centres and ourselves. We really hammered home the message that uh, we needed to protect the sea. But that's not really the whole story. Whilst we have some marine conservation zones, we also have some other areas that are protected as well. And part of what we're doing now is trying to look at the whole picture to decide what's protected, how is it protected, how can we make more of a difference. One of the key things that's happening is that next year, the government in England are doing the last uh, sort of round of designation of sites. This is the last time we can get any of these MCZs designated in England. So it's a crucial time for making sure that we have protection for our seas. However, we have some really big challenges um, at the moment when it comes to sort of making the case for protection of the seas. Uh, as, as we all know, we are in the process of Brexiting, and one of the main uh, vocal groups during the whole uh, debate about Brexit was, of course, the fishing industry. You may remember seeing the uh, press about the flotilla up the Thames with Nigel Farage and it being uh, this sort of almost pantomime of a, uh, of a show outside uh, Westminster to try and show politicians that the fishing industry wanted us to leave Europe. They, of course, were told that if we were to leave Europe, they would have more control over our seas. We might be able to control, for example, who fishes where with, uh, with more certainty and ensure that catches for British fishermen were bigger. Um, not necessarily actually the case in reality, but that's definitely what was sort of told to the fishing industry. And that is somewhat at odds with this issue to protect the sea. So we have to try and reframe this Brexit message to say, OK, we're going to have more control over our seas, but ultimately what we want that to do is to ensure that we have control and we can protect as well as use them uh, to, as an industry in and of themselves. We want to protect them to make sure that there are going to be fish for future generations to actually fish. So as part of the work that I'm looking at at the moment, we are looking at all different types of marine protected area to try and understand how, how they've been designated, why they've been designated, and what pressures they're under. These are all the different types of uh, marine protected area in the UK. So we have SPAs, uh, which are special protected areas. The majority of, well, all of these are designated for birds, to protect birds, but quite a lot of these sites have seaward extensions, which means that there is some way to kind of protect the sea bit that's um, included in the SPA designation. We have uh, special areas of conservation, um, which protect different types of habitats that are recognized to be important at a European level. Now, these two types of sites are really interesting when, it, when you think about Brexit, because they are designated under EU legislation, and that's the Habitats and Birds Directives. Some of you may know that um, one of the huge worries for environmental groups is that when we leave Europe, we may not take that bit of legislation into our own law. It's one of the things that's sort of up for debate at the moment. 
So one of our big worries is what's going to happen to all of the sites that are classed as SPAs and SACs in the UK. We, we feel that it's unlikely that they won't remain in place, but we are really worried that it potentially could lessen the levels of protection that they have. We also have marine conservation zones. So these are the ones that I was talking about previously, the ones that we've all been campaigning for for many years now. These were designated under uh, our own laws, so we have more control over how they're managed and regulated. And they exist at the moment in England, Wales, and Northern Ireland. In Scotland, they have something similar, but it's called a Nature Conservation MPA. And that's designated under the Scottish law. Those sites, those top four, are the ones that make up what we sort of term marine protected areas. And what we're trying to do at the moment is to call for um, an ecologically coherent network of marine protected areas, which is a whole heap of jargon, but basically means we want enough of these sites across the whole of the UK that are well managed and protected and probably uh, and properly designated to ensure that we have around about 30% of the seabed that's actually protected. Ramsar sites and triple SIs are also types of marine protected areas, but they don't make up this network at the moment. So they aren't included when you look at the percentage of sites that have protection. So, our campaign over the next couple of years is really going to focus on designation and management of marine protected areas in the whole of the UK. We want to ensure that not only are sites properly designated, so they get those lines on the map, but something actually happens within that site to ensure that the animals that call at home have a safe place to live, that the most damaging activities are properly prevented and don't occur in that site. Uh, for example, this picture was taken at the Fowl and Halford SAC, so a special area of conservation, which is already designated, so in theory protected. Unfortunately, the uh, Harbour Commission want to build a, a channel through the middle of this SAC so that cruise ships that visit that area have a safe passage into shore so they can um, disembark passengers. At the moment, what happens is the boat more uh, further out and smaller boats come in and out of the area. This area was designated because it's really important. It's got a wonderful merl beds, um, and rays live there, catfish live there. So it's an important area for, for nature conservation. And digging this channel would literally dig through the thing that this site was designated for. Unfortunately, the um, MMO, um, the body that issue the license to say whether or not this can happen, are actually considering whether this can happen. It's not an outright no. They will actually consider, okay, how much damage is it going to do? Is it possible that maybe some of it can be mitigated in some way? As the Marine Conservation Society, clearly we think that it's ridiculous, and if you protect an area, you should actually protect an area. So what we're doing is campaigning on this site specifically and saying this should not happen. We, we definitely think that this site needs to be protected. And it was designated, so it needs to be well managed. As I mentioned before, we've also um, got this big key date coming up next year when we've got sites that are going to be designated as marine conservation zones in England. This is going to be a really hard battle, which we will definitely need all of you to help with, because the sites that are left in that list of, of original sites that were chosen to be designated in England are the hard ones. They're Studland Bay, where there's lots of different players who have different views on whether or not the site, site should be designated. These are large offshore sites where um, we have big European fleets that come and fish in our waters, and they don't necessarily want the site to be designated because it means that they won't be able to fish there. So we've got a fight on our hands to make sure that we can get the sites that we want. We've identified 34 priority sites that we want to see designated, and we really need your help to make sure that that happens. 
So here's a bit of a sneak peek of our campaign that we're going to be launching in a couple of weeks online. It's called Ocean Devotion, and we want people to show how much they love UK seas, to make sure that we're telling decision makers across the whole of the UK that our seas are worth protecting and need to be protected. We're going to have a petition on our website that people can sign up to, and we've got paper copies at the back. My colleague Emily is on our, on our stand there, um, and if you want to come and sign, um, we, we would love to talk to you more about this, and if you could sign our petition, that would be great. This website is going to have a really fun and interactive map that will show all of the different um, marine protected areas around the whole of the UK. So you can see which ones are near you, zoom in and out and have a look, um, see if they're protected, how they're protected, what animals live in that area. And most importantly, if in some way that site's threatened, we'll give you a way to take action to make sure that your voice is heard and that we're calling for better protection for our seas. So I really hope that you will all join me in calling for more marine protected areas across the whole of the UK. I am absolutely delighted to say that once again, BSAC has said that they will support our campaign, which is absolutely fabulous. We really need your support. We really need everyone in this room to be telling their friends, their MP, how important the sea is to them and making sure that the seas get the protection that they deserve. Thank you. Thank you.